Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on functional analysis. In this video, what we're going to do uh, is uh, prove that the metric space uh, CAB uh, with the Suprema metric on, which is the metric space we've been studying now for the uh, past few videos, uh, that that is a complete metric space. And this is what we've been building up to, is a complete metric space, i.e. Uh, any Cauchy sequences of function, any Cauchy sequence of functions in this metric space, in this set, CAB, uh, which um, is Cauchy according to the Suprema metric, uh, is uh, going to converge to a limit within in uh, this uh, metric space. Okay, uh, so let's start off then with a sequence of uh, functions that are in this uh, metric space, so a sequence of continuous functions are on the interval a, b. So we'll have f1 of x, f2 of x, f3 of x, etc. And let's say that this is a Cauchy sequence. So it's a Cauchy sequence according to uh, the Suprema metric that we have on this metric space. Okay, uh, so uh, all of these functions in here, remember, are elements of uh, this interval, uh, sorry, elements of this set CAB. So they are all continuous functions on the interval AB. They are not just numbers, they are functions uh, mapping this interval AB onto the real line such that uh, that function is continuous. Okay, so what does it mean for this sequence to be Cauchy with respect to the metric on this metric space? Well, it means that whatever epsilon you give me, so for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists some natural number, big N, uh, which is an element of the natural numbers, such that if little n and little m are greater than or equal to big N, it implies that the distance between those two, the distance between f uh, little n x and f little m x, is go in the um, so according to this suprema metric is going to be less than epsilon. So basically, what it says is that there is some point at f big N of x in this sequence of functions where if you look at that term in this sequence of functions and take any two uh, terms in the sequence beyond there, so take any f little n of x and any f little m of x, which are beyond uh, that term f big N of x in this sequence of functions, then the distance in this metric space is going to be less, uh, between those two, is going to be less than epsilon. Okay, so now let's write out what does this distance uh, mean in terms of, uh, well, what does it mean? Um, it means uh, this distance, this supremum distance is the supremum uh, over x is an element of a, b of the modulus of f little n x minus f little m x. Okay, and we know that that's going to be less than epsilon. So now let's write out in full what this uh, this means. Uh, this means the supremum of a great big set, the supremum of the set containing the uh, modulus of f n x minus f m x, where x is an element of the other of the interval a b. Okay, uh, so let me draw a picture to illustrate what that means. Uh, so uh, if we draw a picture, then there's a here is the interval a b here. A, B, uh, and then we have two functions that say here is f little n of x, and here is, we'll have down here, f little m of x, then what you do is you, um, you go along and uh, plug in every single value of x, which is an element of A, B, so you let x vary over all the elements of A, B, you calculate what is the distance between the point f so if we have a point here which is x, you calculate what the difference between that point f little n of x is and f little m of x is, and you take the modulus of that difference. So basically, you are, you are taking the height of that line connecting the two, basically, and you are sticking that into a set, and you then take the supremum of that set, and that is going to be less than epsilon. So what that, in fact, tells you is that if this is going to be true, then for all x is an element of this element, or is an, ele is an element of this interval a, b, then it implies that, um, well, not implies, that, di that the distance uh, this implies that for all x, x is an element of the interval a, b, the distance between f, n of x minus f, m of x has to be strictly less than epsilon, because the supremum of this set is less than epsilon, therefore all the elements of this set are less than epsilon, therefore for whatever x you pick in this interval a, b, that distance between uh, the value that the function f little n ascribes to x and the value that the function f little m of x ascribes to x is going to be less than epsilon. 
Okay, right. Uh, so, uh, that's what it means uh, for uh, this sequence of functions to be Cauchy. So, how are we going to go about proving that this has a limit uh, within uh, the metric space CAB with the su this Suprema metric on it? Well, what we saw quite a few videos ago now is that... Um, in the uh, sorry, what we saw in the uh, videos on limits uh, in the metric space CAB uh, with the Suprema metric, uh, we saw that um, that if you have a sequence of functions which converges to another function uh, in this metric space, then it implies that the sequence of functions converges pointwise to that function. So let's suppose if there was a limit, this function L of x, then this is then this is. Uh, the pointwise limit of these two. It, if the pointwise limit does not exist, then it implies that the limit does not exist. If the pointwise limit does does exist, then we know that that doesn't necessarily imply that uh, this actually converges in this metric space, because this, remember, is uniform convergence. Okay. Uh, but if you've got any hope of this converging to something uniformly, it must converge to something pointwise. So let's firstly try and work out what the pointwise limit. Well, let's firstly try and show that there is a pointwise limit. Okay. Uh, so um, so right. Uh, so the way in which we are going to show uh, that there is a pointwise limit is we need to show that for whatever uh, little k you pick within the interval a b, then the uh, the sequence of real numbers that you get by evaluating each one of these functions at the point x is equal to k, that that is going to converge to some value. That is what it means to converge pointwise. That at every little k with um, sorry, as every little x within the interval a b, uh, the the um, sequence of real numbers that you get by substituting in that value uh, into all the functions converges basically. Okay, uh, so we need to show that that, uh, that those uh, sequences converge. So we need to show that if you take any k, if you take if you let k be any element of the interval a, b, then if I draw a picture, so here we have the interval a, b so basically what we have is a sequence of functions that might look something like this. What we need to do is say, okay, we have picked some k which is in this interval a, b. We are now looking at this sequence here of real numbers. So let's say this was, uh, this first function here was f1 of x, this was f2 of x, and the top one was f3 of x. Then we are now going to construct a sequence of real numbers, which is f1 evaluated at k, this real number, then f2 evaluated at k, this real number, then f3 evaluated at k, this real number. So we're going to construct that sequence of real numbers. So we'll have this sequence f1 evaluated at k, f2 evaluated at k, f3 evaluated at k, etc. And we want to prove that we need to show that that sequence is going to converge to some, to some value, basically, here. So let's say it converges to this orange dot here, okay? And basically, we want to show that for all k that this holds, basically. And then we'll define, uh, define the uh, pointwise limit function to just be the function that ascribes every value uh, in the interval a, b. It ascribes it its pointwise limit, i.e. k will go to this pointwise limit here. Let's say uh, you have some other point um, a here then uh, that will go to some other pointwise limit. Maybe its pointwise limit is over here too. And basically what you'll get is a whole function of pointwise limits, maybe something like that. Okay, uh, right, and that's what we want to prove exists. We want to prove that this pointwise limit exists. Right, uh, so uh, we need to prove uh, that this function, uh, that this pointwise uh, sequence of fun of uh, real numbers uh, converges uh, in the real line. Now, how can we do that? We can show that it's Cauchy. So we want to show this sequence is Cauchy for all k. Cauchy uh, for all k. Okay, so we need to show, uh, to satisfy the Cauchy criterion, what we need to show is that there exists some, and I better use different uh, symbols to the one that I used above, let's say there exists some uh, big Q, oh no, I won't use big Q, uh, that will just make it look like the rationals. There exists some big P, which is an element of the natural numbers, uh, such that if little p and little q are elements, are, uh, sorry, are greater than or equal to big P, then it implies that the distance in the real line, which is just the modulus of fp k minus fq k, so the function evaluated at k, uh, the p function evaluated at k minus the q function evaluated at k is going to be less than. Um, ooh, where where did that? What happened there? For all k and for all epsilon, um, 
for all epsilon, we'll say for all epsilon, we'll leave this as, a, as epsilon, is going to be less than epsilon. So my claim, basically, is that if you give me an epsilon, I am going to be able to find you some big P, so some F big P, evaluated at k here, such that if you take any uh, two uh, points f little p k and f little q k, which are beyond uh, this point f big p k in this uh, sequence of real numbers, then the distance between them is going to be less than epsilon. And I can do that for whatever epsilon you give me. I can always find you a big p. Okay, so my claim is just go back to this definition of Cauchy up here. So the fact that these uh, that this sequence of functions is a Cauchy sequence as far as d infinity is concerned means that I can find a point in this sequence of functions where if you take any two functions beyond that in the sequence, then their distance, the distance between them, is less than epsilon. And we know that what that means, uh, for that distance to be less than epsilon, that means that uh, the distance between any, uh, between the value that, that, f uh, that the function f little n ascribes x and the value that the uh, function function f a little m ascribes x, the distance between them has to be less than epsilon for all x is an element of ab, for all x is an element of ab. So my claim is let p equal big N, basically. Uh, so go, take your epsilon. You've given me some epsilon and challenged me to be able to do this. I say, go up here, stick your epsilon in here, get me some big N. And basically, my claim is that if little p and little q are greater than or equal to your big N, then uh, the modulus of fpk minus fqk is going to be less than epsilon. And that just follows because, um, because if you've picked p and q such that they are greater than or equal to n, then that implies uh, that if I take the whole function f little n evaluated at x minus f little m evaluated at x, where x can take on any value between a and b, then the modulus is going to be less than epsilon. So for all x is an element of a, b, the, modula, the, di the modulus of the difference between uh, the values that those two functions ascribe is going to be less than epsilon. So it's certainly going to be true at k, basically. So we're just applying this fact at k. Uh, so basically, whatever k you give me, I can do this. I can show you that the, uh, the, the point-wise sequence here of real numbers is going to be a Cauchy sequence, and therefore it has a limit. So uh, let's, let's call this limit lk, basically. Uh, so the limit of the uh, k point. Uh, so the point k, the limit of the point of the point-wise sequence uh, corresponding to the point k in the interval a, b. Okay, and we can do that for absolutely every single k is an element of the interval a, b. So we can construct a whole function, basically. We can construct this function L, which is going to map the interval a, b onto uh, the real line. And the way it's going to work is that it's going to map a single point k onto its pointwise limit, which I just called L, k, basically. So it's going to map it onto, if you like, this is the limit as uh, n approaches infinity of f, n, k. So the limit of this, um, of this pointwise uh, sequence of real numbers, basically. Okay, uh, right. Uh, so uh, we'll call it there for this video and continue in the next video. Uh, so what we've got so far is that um, that, uh, the, that this sequence of functions does have a pointwise limit.